So we've now established what is possible and what is not if our chocolatier is to meet the constraints. How do we find the best combination that produces the maximum profit? Well, we said there were seven steps and we followed the first five. Now let's do the other two. And they are these. Number six, we'll discover that the optimum is one of the intersection points in the feasible area. We need to evaluate these to solve for the maximum or minimum. In this place, we'll be looking for a maximum, that is, maximum profit. And seventh, our last step, will be to check that the final answer makes sense as a solution to the original problem. Are we sure that there isn't some other combination of chocolates that would make more profit while still meeting the constraint? Now we're going to take our chocolate maker's objective function and work out how to maximise his profits subject to the constraints that he has to face. And we'll begin by graphing the constraints. The first constraint is the labour constraint. Now this is an equation of a straight line, so we can find two pairs of coordinates and plot the line on the diagram. The constraint is 4m plus 18h equals 1296. So if we set m equal to 0, we get 18h equals 1296. So h is 72. So that's one point on the diagram. m equals 0, h equals 72. Now if we set h equal to 0, we have 4m equals 1296, m equals 324. So that's established a second point, and we can simply draw those two points, and we have our line representing this equation. Now we've shaded the area to the right and above the line to show that those combinations aren't feasible for our chocolate producer. They're not within the labour constraint. Now let's add the second constraint. This is the capital constraint, the amount of machine time. And we can plot that in the same way as we did for the labour constraint. The constraint here is 12m plus 6h equals 1824. So if we now set m equal to 0, we get 6h equals 1824. So h is equal to 304. Now we find our other set of coordinates by setting h equal to 0. This will give us 12m equals 1824, so m equals 152. So from these pairs of coordinates, we've plotted the second line on the diagram, again shading the area above and to the right of the line to indicate that these are areas of non-feasibility. Now we need to add the non-negativity constraints. We've shaded the areas where h or m would be less than zero. And that means we've now established the feasible region A, B, C, D. So the possible levels of output meeting all of the constraints are within this box. So we can look at points A, B, C and D. Point A has the coordinates 0 and 72. Point B has coordinates of 130.5 and 43. Point C has coordinates of 152 and 0. And point D has coordinates of 0 and 0. It may not be at all obvious how we got point B. Well, we use the principles that we've met before. We're finding the solution 
of a pair of simultaneous equations. So if we look at the two constraints, we have 4m plus 18h equals 1296. We can call that equation 1, our labour constraint. We also know that 12m plus 6h equals 1824. That's our capital, our machine constraint, that we'll call equation 2. Where these two lines cross, then we're going to find that 1 is equal to 2. So how could we do that? Well, one way of doing it is to take our first equation and multiply it by 3. So that gives us 12m plus 54h equals 3,888. Now we can subtract equation 2 from equation 3 to get 48h equals 2064. That is to say, h is equal to 43. That gives us one coordinate. Now it's easy to get the other one. 4m plus 18h equals 1296. And we've just established that h equals 43. So we can now write 4m plus 18 times 43 equals 1296. So 4m equals 522 m equals 130.5. So that's how we knew the coordinates for point B. We can now check on the four points which define the boundaries of the feasible region and see which is the most profitable for our chocolate producer. If we look at point A, if we produce at point A, then we produce no M and 72H. So our profits will be 55, the profits on an M, times 0, because we're not making any M if we choose this point, plus 89, the profits from a batch of H, times 72, the number of batches of H that we would then make, which gives us 6,408 euros as the profit which we would make if we chose point A. We could now perform the same task for points B, C and D. And for point B, the profits are 11004.5. For point C, 8360, and for point D, 0. So we've established that point B represents the maximum profit. We know now how many batches of M and how many batches of H to produce in order to maximise our profits within those constraints. So when a producer has to maximise profits subject to a set of constraints, linear program is the only realistic way of establishing how to handle those resources in an optimal way.